So today's lesson is about the micro minerals, all the minerals that animals need in small quantities in their bodies. So the first one is iron. Also, um, please take note of all the symbols of these minerals. So Fe is the symbol for iron. So the main deficiency that um, iron causes is anemia. So if there's not enough um, iron in the pers uh, or person or the animal's blood, it can cause anemia. So what the picture just shows us here is one side is the normal side. Normally in all the um, blood capillaries, you find a lot of red blood cells and also white blood cells. But if you compare that with the uh, blood capillaries of an anemic animal on this side, you'll see there's a considerable lower red blood cell count. And this is usually because there's no iron, which means that the red blood cells can't form, which in essence means that the blood of this animal can't um, circulate enough oxygen throughout the body of this animal. So this is actually quite bad for the animal itself. And also anemia can lead to uh, organisms bleeding out. So they also struggle to heal usually if they, they um, get wounded easily. And most probably that wound will not heal. So the second one uh, is iodine, as simple as I. And if there's an iron deficiency, it causes goiter. So in this case, many times animals are born dead to begin with, if it's very, very extreme, especially if the, the fetus in the mother's womb did not get enough iodine, it can be born dead or blind. And in this case, goiter is this enlarged uh, thyroid gland right here. So it has exponentially enlarged and it's actually even seen um, outside of the animal's body. Okay, so the third mineral is zinc. And again, if there is not enough zinc in the animal's body, it can cause the deficiency of parakeratosis. So it's a big word, but basically it sounds kind of like keratin, like the, the karate, um, keratosis, it sounds like keratin, and keratin we find in our skin, nails, hair, so on, same thing for the animals. So in this picture, we see a healthy pig on this side, normal height for its age, and in the side, the little pig, piglet, it's a little bit runted, it's got skin issues, the hair is matted and falling out, and that refers to the keratin not forming. So zinc is important for the healthy formation of um, skin, um, skin itself and the hair as well. Fourthly is selenium. So when there's a deficiency of selenium in animals, it can cause white muscle disease and mulberry disease. So let's start with white muscle disease. In this case, literally it affects the muscles. And this case is a normal sample of muscle. It's kind of pink, red, or dark pink, because there's normal blood flow inside the meat. But in this case, here we see some white muscle. So there's not enough red pigment, there's not enough blood flowing through these muscles. And usually what this causes is that the animals will also experience um, difficulty moving, they will have uh, muscle contractions, and yeah, overall, these animals are not healthy and it's also not healthy for us to eat their meat. Then the mulberry disease usually affects the heart. So this is actually a picture of a heart. It's a little bit difficult to see, but there are these white little lesions on the inside. And these lesions is usually where the disease gets its name from. So mulberry is actually a type of berry. So all the mulberries, they have um, their compound fruit. So all these little round bits together form the fruit. And it looks like that in this heart, why that it's got a name, that these little lesions is kind of like uh, one of these berries um, bound together, little fruits of the berry. So that's where the name comes from, mulberry disease. So again, the heart and sometimes the muscles get affected with this disease. Then fifthly, copper. So if there's a copper deficiency, it can cause also anemia and specifically sway back. So in this case, uh, this horse is normal at the bottom, number B. Usually the back is horizontal. Sometimes, okay, the, the hindquarters can be a little bit higher, but it looks fine enough you can ride this horse. But in the top part of A, you can literally see how the entire back has actually sagged, and it's like the spine has not um, completely formed, or it's well, it's malformed, and there is absolutely no muscle mass there at the um, spine. So that is what we call sway back. Then a cobalt deficiency can cause wasting disease. And my, wasting disease is also basically a line for animal is, um, doesn't have enough muscle mass, uh, it's, the animal is very skinny, 
So here's a couple of signs also where they say what can be associated with um, wasting disease, poor growth rates, the animal isn't um, growing enough, lethargy, they're tired all the time, poor appetite, oh, and tear staining is kind of unique as well for wasting disease. The picture doesn't show it, but usually with your sheep, it looks like the animals are crying. So there'll be like tears staining the eyes, between the eyes and the nose, there'll be like tear stains. And it kind of looks like animals are crying and they're sad, but that's basically just because of the cobalt deficiency that's causing it. Anemia can also occur in this disease, and they also have a lowered immune um, system in this case, if there's a cobalt deficiency. All right, then we move on to vitamins. So vitamins are actually um, divided into two different groups, those that are water soluble and those that are fat soluble. It just means that the vitamins are um, dissolved in our bodies, in animals' bodies, either in water or in fats, and also transported via water or fat in the rest of the body. So now we're looking at the water soluble vitamins. This is important. You guys must be able to differentiate between the water soluble and the fat soluble vitamins. So the first one that's water soluble is vitamin B1, also referred to as thiamine. Mostly in exams, if you answer B1, that's fine. But sometimes in the tests, they refer to thiamine and you have to kind of remember, oh, okay, it refers to B1. So try and remember some of these names, the, the fancier terms. So then the deficiency of B1 it causes polyneuritis and stargazer. So polyneuritis, poly means many, and the neuritis refers to neurons in the body, so nerves. So basically what this causes is that the animal can't move its muscles, its legs, its arms, because the nervous system is affected. So in these pictures of the chicks, this actually shows us the stargazer position. So what happens is literally the animal is looking upwards, neck bent backwards, and it looks like it's staring at the stars the whole, the whole time. So that refers to the stargazer, so vitamin B1 is unique, it causes the stargazer position. And also we can see that the legs are a little bit stiff and it can't move its legs or stand on it or move or anything. So that was part of the polyneuritis part. Then vitamin B2, also known as riboflavin, its deficiency causes cold toe paralysis. So as the name says, literally the, the toes of the animals curl and there also is also a nervous system deficiency um, issue, that disease. They can't move their legs, they can't walk anymore, they can't move their muscles. So in both these examples, B1 and B2, it's very, very prevalent or happens a lot, especially in chickens. Doesn't mean other animals can't get it, but the chances of chickens usually having a vitamin B1 and 2 deficiency is, well, it happens more regularly than with other organisms. Then vitamin B6, peridoxine, uh, usually uh, B6 and B12, uh, I don't think they usually use the difficult words, usually it's for um, B1 and B2. But anyway, B6 is also known as peridoxine. Then the deficiency of it, it can also cause anemia and reduced growth. As the picture here shows, we can see a little piglet, it's kind of having an eye issue, can't really open, open its eyes, and it's very, very small, it's runt-like, so it's not growing. Same thing with the chicken pictures at the bottom there. They have inflamed eyes, so the eyes swell, they struggle to open up. And the other bird where we see the entire body, it's a little bit ruffled. The feathers aren't really um, lying correctly, the plumage has issues, and also has growth issues. Then vitamin B12. Uh, this guy causes wasting disease that's basically like your muscle dystrophy. So wasting disease means this animal has less muscle mass, they kind of look extremely skinny, you can see their bones rib cage, and so on. Um, in the picture here is of a deer and it shows a couple of sim um, symptoms that the animal with wasting disease will show. Uh, it mentions their drooping head and drooling as well, so they struggle to actually um, that's the right word. They struggle to, to actually use their bottom jaw. So sometimes the bottom jaw lacks or relaxes too much and they start to draw. And also they struggle to move, so they stumble around. And it says there's no fear of humans. So many guys, these animals, oh, they feel so sick, they can't even run from humans if they are a wild animal. Okay, so then we move on to the vitamins that are fat soluble. So uh, the first one, vitamin A. So this will be all the rest of the vitamins. Basically, your B complex was the water soluble. A, D, E, and K is going to be fat soluble. So deficiency of vitamin A is carotomalay. So carotomalay 
it usually affects the eyes. So basically, the cornea struggles to, to um, it's not it doesn't form correctly. So meaning any keratin, also kara too, or the kara sounds like keratin. So the keratin is supposed to be in the eye and forming the eye correctly. It's not there. So usually you can also see with this eye picture, it's very it's pink around the eye basically. So it's also skin pigments affects the skin pigment. Um, there are no dark spots there. Um, the melanin is supposed to be in the skin. It's not there. And also the eye is affected. So in many cases, it doesn't mean this animal is necessarily blind per se when it has a deficiency, but it can become blind if it is serious and if the sun affects the eye and so on. So technically, it's still not good for the animal. Then vitamin D, it causes uh, its deficiency causes rickets and osteomalacia. So just a point of vitamin D, usually animals and humans can get vitamin D or make it when we're out in the sunlight. So the chances of animals actually getting a vitamin D deficiency are so low. But in many cases, people do keep their sheep and certain livestock indoors or in barns. And in extreme cases, don't allow them to go outside, mainly for safety reasons. But that's bad because the animal does need to go outside for at least a couple of minutes to produce vitamin D in their skins. So you can see the rickets. Uh, the sheep shows, um, again, knock knees, nothing is straight, soft bones, brittle bones. And osteomalacia is basically rickets, but osteomalacia happens in older animals, whereas rickets happen in young animals. Okay, then we have vitamin E, that's the third one. It causes its deficiency as muscular dystrophy. So again, weak muscles or less muscle mass, it starts to become skinny and can't really, um, it struggles to walk around, lethargy, doesn't have energy to move around and so on. Then vitamin K, its deficiency causes prolonged blood, blood clotting. So the body struggles to heal itself. So if it does get its blood vessels or whatever gets damaged, or your skin gets damaged, then usually there's supposed to be a blood clot forming or as this number two in the picture shows us that um, threads are forming the entire blood vessel will heal itself or if you get a, a sore on your skin or a cut on your skin it heals so in this case um, it doesn't happen or it takes very very long for this to happen in these animals okay and this was the homework along with this reading piece